What's going on guys? It's OmniArk and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about the best troop type to focus on as a free to play player. Now guys, I just want to apologize for my decrease in activity on YouTube and over on Twitch as well. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, my uploads have been less frequent than I am used to doing and I haven't live streamed in a few weeks. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, the first is that my personal life is just crazy. Uh, if you guys don't know, I do have a full-time job where I work 40 plus hours a week plus the commute on top of that and just all the things that surround that as well. Um, plus trying to balance a social life. And I'm also getting ready to move to a new apartment and my, I, there's just a lot of things going on. Okay. There's a lot of things going on and it just leaves me with less free time than I would hope for. And when I do get free time, uh, I've been trying to actually enjoy it a little bit more than just constantly grinding out videos, especially because I just came off the heels of two back to back KVKs. So I was in uh, KVK two for about half of it. And then we migrated to a new kingdom and there was a couple of weeks of downtime and then boom, right back into KVK two. So I've just been playing the game a lot. And now that this KVK, I'm, I'm back in my home kingdom. Um, I I'm just taking this time to actually like s not spend all day on rise of kingdoms. Right. And I know that that sounds crazy. Like, Oh my God, how do you not spend all day on rise of kingdoms? But, uh, yeah. So, you know, back to back KVKs, I just want to do play other games and do other things while I can right now. Uh, that way when my next KVK comes, I'm fully refreshed and I'm ready to, you know, completely no life the game again. So with all that out of the way, guys, again, I do apologize and thank you all so much who have been very patient. Hopefully I can stream either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but regardless with all that out of the way, let's talk about the best troop type to focus on as free to play players. So this is a question that I get asked a ton, especially over on Twitch during my live streams. And you know, it, people just want to know like what commanders should I be focusing on to best utilize, you know, my units, right? The, the commanders that you pick are kind of the catalyst to getting the value out of the troops that you're training. Now, the one thing that I, that I will say is that, uh, as a free to play player, you know, you're going to have armies of all different troop types right because you train all types of troops and so eventually you're going to want to use your archers or your infantry or your cavalry right so it's not like you're only ever gonna use a single troop type but i can understand the the desire to at least want to focus on one and, and sort of have that goal set in your head right and so let's talk about that now first thing we have to talk about actually is uh what i've said previously so in the past I have uh, recommended cavalry as your free to play um, focus uh, because honestly, when I was looking at it, I think cavalry have the best epic commanders in the game. And this is still something that I believe. I still think that this is true. I think if you look at the epic tier, there are more cavalry commanders in this tier than any other. Although I guess technically with Kiera, you could uh, say that there are an equal number of archers, of course, right? But I just think Pelagius is a very powerful epic commander, as well as Bybars. You get a really nice combo here with his AOE and his slowing effect on his um, on his active skill. I did talk about this in my Bybars video. Make sure you go and check that out. Uh, and also Belisarius is really great for killing farmers. And then finally, uh, Minamoto is just very easy to obtain for a low spender. You can get him to five, five, one, one. He's usable. Cao Cao is a very good gold key commander. Uh, probably the second best in the gold che uh, gold chests right behind Martel. Right. And so getting him to five, uh, five, one, well, you wouldn't want him five, five, but you know what I mean? Getting him for free over time is going to happen. Right. And so there's just a lot of options for cavalry. And again, this is what I've recommended in the past, but my opinion has since changed okay a lot has changed in the game over the last uh year or so right in the last nine months since i've been making content for uh rise of kingdoms and also i feel like i understand the game better now than i ever have before so with that being said let's just get it out of the way i think the best troop type to focus on right now for free to play players is infantry i think infantry might be the new best option and that doesn't mean that cavalry is bad but i have some reasons as to why i think infantry actually might be a better choice 
for free to play okay there are three things we have to talk about uh the first thing is uh, what exactly is the role of a free to play player right and we talked about this in my alexander commander guide uh but the role of a free to play player is to reinforce um garrisons so flags and forts to reinforce rallies right and to also do a little bit of open field fighting if you are able to do so now if you're reinforcing a flag or you're joining a rally uh, your commanders don't actually matter right the only commanders that matter in those scenarios are the leaders of the rally or the leaders of the garrison so in those instances it doesn't matter what commander or what troop type you're focusing on but in the open field perspective uh it does matter right because now you're fighting uh with your commanders and your troops and your equipment and your tech and so when we look at some of the options for cavalry uh, if we look at minamoto or tsao tsao or even pelagius and all the epics right those commanders while they are powerful um in my opinion right i do think that they're solid commanders uh, they are some of the first to be targeted in the open field so what i mean by that is if you're in the open field fighting and you can't see uh it's hard to even distinguish who is who um you're just going to attack the commander that you think you have the highest chance of defeating and unfortunately even though cavalry are strong they they tend to get taken down pretty quickly and that's kind of just uh the just the general um like on average it'll be easier to take down a minamoto tsao tsao than it will be to take down a richard martel right just on average now of course if the richard martel you know if the richard is 5111 and the martel is 5111 and the minamoto tsao tsao is completely expertise with good equipment well then it's actually going to be harder to kill the minamoto tsao tsao right because the other ones aren't expertise and they're they're 5111 um so but what i'm saying is in general in general uh, in in an even pl playing field it's going to be easier to take down the cavalry commanders so what does this mean for free to play well if you focus on cavalry and you go into fight in the open field the last thing that you want as a free to play player is to kind of be the most attractive target out in the open field you don't want to look like the juicy free kills right you don't want to look like free kills so when i'm playing right for example and i could just speak from my own experience if there's a giant fight going on <clears throat> out in the open field what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna focus on the minamotos the tau taus the pelagiuses right i'm gonna focus on the joan of arcs i'm gonna focus on the ethel fleds um and i'm gonna focus on the by bars and of all the commanders also uh, genghis khan too which he hurts a little bit to attack but uh you can take him down pretty easy so what what you notice with all the things that i just mentioned um a lot of those are cavalry commanders right and that's just because i know from experience that those are going to be the ones that are easiest to take down in the open field so when we look at what your role is as free to play well if you focus all of your universal legendary commander sculptures on Tao Tao, for example, or Genghis Khan or Saladin, right? Uh, what you're doing is you're focusing on cavalry, which again is fine. A lot of these commanders are really good, especially when we look at uh, like a five, 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 one Saladin is, is insanely good. Right. And I actually do recommend, uh, I have a video where I talk about the best five, five, one, one legendary commanders. I highly recommend you check that out if you're free to play. Um, but I do recommend Saladin in that video, right? So there's a lot of good reasons to pick cavalry as free to play but i think in general if you're going to be fighting in the open fields the 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 benefit of picking infantry as your as your primary tr uh, troop type to focus on is that you're less likely to be targeted in the open field right everybody's going to be targeting those minamotos the tau taus the pelagiuses and you're going to be maybe just as a uh, low power as some of those free to play players who are using those legendaries but you're going to be out there with your richard at five five one one or your alexander at five five one one right or your martel and you know even though they're only five five one one and you're only a free to play player when you're out in the open field and there's all this chaos going on and, and you don't know it's hard to distinguish who's a t5 player from who's free to play well you're probably just going to avoid the Richard until you've taken care of some of the squishier armies out in the open field. And so by picking infantry and, and investing your universals into somebody like uh, Alexander, right? Or um, Richard or Constantine, right? Uh, those are commanders that tend to get left alone in the open field, or at the very least, um, they're hit 
less frequently or they're hit last right or maybe if you're running away and that's the slowest army out in the field then you kind of get you get in a bad uh, position but overall in the open field um you don't want to be targeted as a free-to-play player and i think the best way to do that is to focus on the infantry legendary commanders because they tend to be more tanky now there's another reason why i think focusing on infantry is a good re is a good choice for free-to-play players and that is that if for example you are powering up during a mightiest governor right like let's say you were just hoarding speed ups and hoarding materials uh not materials resources you're hoarding everything for a big mightiest governor push right and it comes to that troop training stage and if you're focusing on infantry what that means is you're going to be training a ton of infantry and this is really good for free to play because as we talked about before one of the roles that free to play plays in the game is reinforcing flags and forts uh, and also reinforcing rallies however more likely than not you're going to be reinforcing a flag with infantry units now this isn't always the case right and it depends on what kvk you're in depends on the meta and how the game evolves but a lot of times you're going to be reinforcing a flag with infantry and the difference between reinforcing a flag versus reinforcing a rally is that if you're on the offensive and your alliance is the one that is performing the rally attack uh, rallies lose a hundred percent of of troops right so essentially all of these sev wounds turn into deads if you are rallying and that applies to everyone who joins that rally however if you're part of a garrison only 50 percent of the sev wounds die and the other 50 percent are sev wounds so what does this mean well this means that it's more affordable for you as a free-to-play player to reinforce a garrison than it is to reinforce a rally this also means that you're keeping half of your troops right which if you plan on fighting in the open field um it would stink to lose all of your troops in a rally right and then when you go to fight in the open field you don't have any troops left so by focusing on infantry um you're still being uh, very useful for your alliance during kvk because you can you'll have a lot of, of of those infantry units to perform an action that is valuable which is reinforcing a, a flag or a fort and then on top of that you'll have some units left over to maybe have an open field march with you know alex and richard or something like that which will be less likely to get hit than if you had your minamoto tau tau finally i want to talk again about the commanders right because there's a hidden value in focusing on infantry legendaries and the, the the value is not only are they going to be good in the open field which we talked about extensively so far but right now the meta for sunset canyon and lost canyon seems to be infantry right it, it just seems to be as i show you my loss here um it seems to be infantry okay um i seem to win more than i lose which is really nice but when you focus on developing those infantry commanders for the open field fighting you also will have those infantry commanders for sunset canyon and lost canyon these are really great sources of free rewards that you can get every single day whether you're in sunset canyon every day or lost canyon you can get those rewards you know when you're in kvk of course um but you can see here that a majority of my marches are infantry because it just seems to be the case that they perform the best in this particular game mode so if the meta for uh for lost canyon or sunset canyon is infantry and you focus on cavalry for example it's going to be really hard for you to perform well which you do still get rewards in sunset canyon for losing right you still get pretty good rewards uh but you won't be able to push very far into lost canyon and that's that's a problem because lost canyon does give you some really great rewards this is how you can get some pretty easy uh fragments of legendary uh equipment Equipment, which we now see Shio's return is also available in the Lucerne Scrolls. I made a video about that uh, a couple days ago. Go ahead and check that out as well. But you'll be able to get a lot of cool stuff in here, right? You'll be able to get these materials. You'll be able to get some more experience if you want. I don't think you really should ever get this. Uh, and this really cool uh, avatar frame, right? Um, but yeah, I, I just think that, you know, if you're going to perform well in Lost Canyon, um, infantry is the way to go. And if you pick infantry as the troop type to focus on well then you kind of get the best of both worlds because you'll have really good uh, marches for the open field and you also will be able to perform well in those game modes now it's also worth noting that arguably the two easiest legendary pieces of equipment to get the eternal knight and shio's return these are both infantry focused pieces of equipment right which is really really useful now of course 
crafting legendary equipment is going to be extremely late game right this is going to be if you're free to play it's going to take a very long time to get to that point but it is it's still worth noting that when you get to that point if you're looking to craft craft your first legendary these two are going to be arguably the easiest for you to get and finally if you're using all of your infantry for your open field marches that frees up your cavalry and what that means is that you can use your cavalry to join attila takeda rallies now attila takeda rallies are pretty much the meta they've been the meta for a very long time uh, it looks like in season five of kvk it's a little bit easier to counter them uh, but up until that point like season three and season four um it's just they're just so dominant right and so the uh the kingdoms and alliances that have the most until decada rallies that are full and reinforced uh seem to be the ones that do the best in kvk and so being a free-to-play player who can sacrifice their cavalry to join those rallies and it won't affect the number of open field marches that they can have because you as a free to play would be focusing on infantry uh, i think that puts you in a really good valuable situation where you can perform two roles relatively well and as one last quick note uh some of the very best infantry commanders are available very early on in the game so richard the first is the first wheel of fortune commander i do think you should still focus on isong a right it's important to know uh, notice um, Isong A is still probably your best option for expertising your first legendary. Uh, he's great on the back of Richard, but he's also great on the back of Ethelfled, Sun Tzu. There's a ton of options for him, right? He's very versatile. So uh, regardless, uh, there's a lot of, it's easy to get some of these best infantry commanders, right? Richard the first obviously is very good. Alexander the great. I just made a video about talking about how amazing he is, especially for free to play. Charles Martel, you're going to get for free from gold keys just by playing the game. And Mark Constantine's going to be a little bit harder for you to get uh, because he is a Mightiest Governor Commander. But at 5511, like I have him, he's still very, very good in uh, the open field, but also in Sunset Canyon, Lost Cannon, etc. So these commanders for infantry are some of the easiest to get in terms of uh, their ease of uh, acquiring to their value as a commander now with all of that being said guys if you enjoyed this video if you learned something if you found it entertaining please drop a thumbs up on it it really does help out my channel a ton if you're new around here don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always links to my social media accounts are in the description below if you want to keep up with me uh while i'm not posting videos i do usually post on my instagram every single day on my story so check me out over there also my twitter as well there is a link to my discord uh, server and my twitch channel where i do live stream rise of kingdoms usually once a week finally there is a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks that's how i play the game and i experience fewer crashes than if i were playing on one of my older phones like i said it's absolutely free so it can't hurt to try it out so click that link in the description below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace